Welcome back, guys. Pro League continues. FaZe takes our first series of the night, 3-0. Second matchup. Beautiful Maven here is ready for Orbit versus Epsilon. Neither yes, of these sir. teams with a win yet in Pro League. Uh, I, I got to ask you, Maven, you know, we saw quite a bit from these two teams at the relegation Maven. tournament. At that event alone, who was the stronger team in your eyes? Uh, I mean, you have to say Epsilon. They met, what, the winner's bracket final, was it? Yeah, I think it was Orbit versus Epsilon. Um, I'm trying to remember the exact series, how it broke down. I think it was a 3-1. My memory fails to serve me, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty Epsilon sure Royalty definitely looked stronger than Orbit. They met in the winner's bracket finals. I actually took Orbit, though, in this particular series just because Epsilon's had a couple devastating losses, and I think Orbit might be a better team than them online, but we'll find out. All right, let's take a look at this Orbit roster. Facento, Burns, Accuracy, and Happy. What have you seen from these guys? What's kind of the roles of each player? Uh, I'll tell you one thing for sure. Facento, every time I cast him, he gets a million hit markers. So we're going to see a lot of that tonight. Yes. Uh, whether it's on land or online, he is going to get hit markers for days when I'm casting his gameplay. But there's a big thing about Orbit over that I like to talk about. You have accuracy is their respawning game leader. So he's going to be the one leading the way kind of on rotations, you know, who's doing what, what their overall objective is coming up a spawn. Um, I know this game plays very fast, but you still have to someone, still have to have someone kind of leading the way. It switches up for S&D. It is Facento that leads the way there. So that's a key thing to look out for once we're switching game modes. Uh, on the other side, we're talking about Exel Epsilon. Yeah, let's Their problem at really is kind of leadership and communication, Chris. Uh, Swanee's kind of had to step into that role. You heard him getting frustrated at relegation. You heard him kind of roaring, screaming, swearing, just frustrated with his team. But despite that, they've been playing very well. So uh, we'll see how it pans out for them tonight. And, and we talked to Swanee kind of extensively at relegation, mostly because we're best friends with him. Uh, but he was kind of talking about the team and, and why he chose to go with Remy and Nagafen. And he said he was really impressed with what he saw at COD Champs. Um, they work really well together in a complimentary aspect. I, I love the pressure that Remy is bringing and that royalty is bringing to this squad. But the question mark has been, can Remy do it consistently? And who is going to be kind of the leader when this team is struggling, when this team is down? You said communication is a big issue, but I've also seen it come down yeah. to just getting the kills when one team is, is, or I guess one player or, or multiple players are being shut down. I think Royalty, without a doubt, has the highest skill ceiling out of any of these players in my mind, though, maybe. Without question, but I guess my concern with him is going to be consistency. Uh, <clears throat> to be fair, at relegation, he was my favorite part about the weekend. Uh, just watching him play, watching that high sensitivity, the fact that I hadn't really seen him play all that much uh, was really a thing I looked forward to the most. I know when I was in broadcaster mode, when I was watching and not actually controlling for the viewer, I was on with him so much, man. It was just the constant highlight reel. It was so fun to watch him break hard points. But <sighs> as good a weekend as he had, he doesn't have the experience compared to a lot of these players. Is he going to be able to do it week in and week out in the league? I, I don't know. I, I, I hope so. I think so. But I do agree with what you said. I think over everyone uh, on these two rosters, he certainly has the highest ceiling in my eyes. We kind of compared him in apathy earlier in the show, um, okay. and, and we were looking at kind of kills per game. They took turns in the search and destroy of who is going to be on top, but apathy kind of outslayed in that one-on-one -on -one battle. Tonight, when I look at this, uh, when I look at this orbit squad, though, I'm wondering, does royalty have that strong of competition? Let's take a look at the roster one more uh, time. Honestly, I, people can, you, I will argue this point for days, but I think Burns is very good at advanced warfare. I mm -hmm. really even think he's very, very good, especially in aggressive sub role, which is similar to what Royalty plays. So yes, I do think he does in Burns. Different players, but uh, high skill ceilings, uh, and especially in this particular title, I, I think that, that he can hang with them. That's the, that's the gunfight I'm looking for. Also, I'm looking at the bow battle here. Swanee, Facento might be happening. I think you're going to see most of the battle action, though, coming from Happy. So look out for Swanee versus Happy here. And then also, you know, who is getting the job done in Search and Destroy for Epsilon? Because Orbit, notorious for their success in S&D. They've done a lot of round 11s, a lot of close game fives, yeah. but Orbit able to get the job done when they need it most. And Facento is normally their clutch man. At least he was throughout the relegation tournament. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's my eyes are on him for two reasons. One, well, several, actually. It'll start with uh, 
the sniper, whether he's able to hit shots, whether he's getting hit markers or finishing kills. The second point, whether he's willing to put it away. Sometimes we've seen him keep that a little too long, not put it away when he should, especially, now I know we're not dealing with that now, but I like got a map like, I think it was Drift uh, yeah. Relegation. He kept that a little longer than I thought he should have. Um, and then three, just how he is as a leader. Again, he's the one kind of driving the forces there uh, for S&D, for this Orbit team. And he's got a lot of pr a lot of pressure on him too because I think about it. I mean, you, Chris, you've played games competitively back in the day. When you're that guy that's the sniper, you tend to kind of lock into a degree. You're very focused on actually sniping. I gotta imagine it's pretty tricky to be the in-game leader while you're sniping, but he's managed to do it. And I think Burns has really been a complimentary player with that aggressive SMG while he's sniping. Um, so they're that able to kind sense. of switch up the roles a little bit at team at times when needed. When it comes down to a 1v1, though, I don't think you want anyone but Facento in that 1v1 for you. And I think when you look over at this Epsilon squad, I'm trying to think of which player I'd want most in Search and Destroy. It might be Nagafen. Uh, Nagafen, I could argue I like Nagafen. Um, God, it's just I feel like this team doesn't have someone. When I, when I think of their entire squad, all of their players jump out for me in response. I don't, I, for whatever reason, none of them really come to mind that much for S&D for me. I guess the one that would the most, yeah, probably Nagafen. Um, someone I would want left in a 1v1. I mean, you, your 1v1, the reason I think Pacento is someone I like is someone in a 1v1, you kind of want your, uh, your your cocky players, your confident players. Someone that's not going to overthink stuff. He's just going to make a move, come up clutch. And that's what I think of with Pacento, man. He's going to make big plays. On the side of Epsilon, I don't know who that guy is for me. Honestly, if I was picking someone, I want to be in like a round 11, one on one. Right. I, I Naga Finn's, a, I, I guess, as good a guess. I don't think I'd want royalty. You know, he's the young up and comer, not someone I'd really want in that clutch situation as much. Um, Swanee, though, just because he's a slower bow player, not so much in that. So, exactly. Yeah, I, could, I, I think of like Finn. Detroit SD, Swanee with the bow in a tight situation. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah. not <laughs> my guy. Um, we'll, we'll have to see it, how the search and destroys play out. If you look at Epsilon, though, you got to think you got to win the hard points. That has been the big weakness of Orbit. They've struggled in hard points at the relegation tournament. They struggled in their first night playing against Isolation. They outslayed Isolation in both of the games. They dominated the slaying call, but still somehow managed to lose those hard points. So staying what? on the objective that is the key. Well, isn't that ISO's thing, though? I mean, what was it, the game with Prophecy where Aqua drops what was it, 45 or 53 or whatever the hell he ended up dropping some right. crazy game and ISO still pulled it out. I mean, I, that, that, those are the games ISO steals. I don't know if that's more to blame on Orbit or just uh, kind of speaking to the fact that ISO is stuck together longer than any team outside of Optic right now. Uh, we've been really impressed with ISO. But in this one, Epsilon, I don't think, dropped a hard point until the finals of relegation. They won everyone up to that point. Orbit struggled back and forth, and we talked about the fact that the game one's been kind of your momentum builder, your, right. your trend setter, whatever you want to call it, the one that's really kicked things off the beginning of these series. And I, can you, or I don't know if you guys want to look it up, but I'd like to know from last night if the team that won game one was the team that took the rest of the series. But I know that's how it went again in night number one. Yeah, it didn't happen. Uh, we saw Elevate able to oh, come back yeah, over yeah, Epsilon yeah. after Epsilon got that early lead yesterday. So I, I think tonight, if Epsilon gets off to another similar hot start, they got to close. They, they got to close out. They can't have any more close games. Let's take a look at our best of five. And I just got word <laughs> from our producer that we have our picks in for host. Orbit is going to be hosting yeah. games one and four. So they're going to get both hard points tonight. That's Detroit. And they're also going to get Drift a little bit later on. What that means, though, is that Epsilon is going to be given the uplink. They're also going to get Game five, if it goes to recovery, search and destroy. Solar also will be their first host for game number two. Now, Maven, I got invites into the game. Did you get in here? I'm in, yes. I, uh, thankfully, it's one of those times where I checked on my own. <laughs> Otherwise, I would most definitely not be in the game. But we're ready to go, and I want to change my pick. Can, can they change my pick? I need uh, my pick changed immediately. You definitely cannot. Uh, I need to but... change my pick because I thought about the fact that Swanee, <laughs> Swan Dog, right now 0 and 2 in the league. He's not losing. He's not going 0 and 3. Roar. He's gonna roar like the British lioness that he is, and they are gonna take this series. I need, I need a change. Who's the, who's the head of this thing? Uh, I guess it's me. Executive <laughs> producer change. <laughs> 
I don't think I'm gonna be allowed to, but all right. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna submit the, the the request to the graphics folk tomorrow. <laughs> it is official, guys. Maven is going epsilon here. Benson will be the only one picking orbit in this best of five. So all right, so here we go. We're kicking stuff off. Yeah, and take, uh, take it away, my friend. Who do you want to watch first? I'll tell you what. I want to I want to go with royalty, man. He's been such a an animal. I know he just dropped, but let's stick with him off a of spawn here when he comes back up just to give the viewers a, a taste of what you're dealing with here when he, you know, he is playing with a battle a lot of times you'll see him with the asm1 but he will fly 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 at you plays very fast very loose very aggressive it can be really fun to watch and uh sorry you didn't see anything there as he drops again <laughs> royalty off to a slow start <laughs> um he started off with the bow that first life now you see him going back to his patented asm1 so i think this is what you're going to see from royalty 90 percent of the time look at that reaction time and the sensitivity just so high from this guy. Over on the other end, I'm looking through the stats. It's been Burns and Happy. Four and two starts from both. Happy was competing for the final seconds in that middle hard point, but Burns is already set up for the new one. He's got accuracy there to support. I want to see how is Burns playing this one. You said this is really a guy who's come into his own in AW so far. Well, I thought he was great at Ghost, too. You know, I coached, uh, I coached Curse for a bit. He would make poor decisions from time to time. But when it came down to someone to get big kills to really outshoot people, I thought he did a great job. I thought he just kind of, you know, there was a time there where he took a little flack with the whole Barnes thing and players kind of giving him grief and teased. And I just feel like people sometimes have trouble taking him seriously in this title for whatever reason. But when it comes down to it, Burns is one hell of a player. Accuracy is going in with the ASM-1 right now as well. Fantastic hold there through the green hall. He's going to pick up a four streak, getting the final 15 seconds as well. If he picks up this kill, last challenge. And as I said, it looks like all of Epsilon is instead going to double back and fight for it. So this should mean Orbit will be first to rotate over to the garage. Burns in the key position to stop the flood. Yeah, they flooded three in back alley, overwhelmed Burns, but it didn't matter at that point. There was only 10 seconds left. They only ended up getting eight or so, and that allowed Orbit to spawn out. Now they've got Parking Garage. So they've got set up right now. Watching back is going to be Vicento, getting a lot of hit markers. He tries to dip out, but unfortunately, he gets taken out by his teammate in accuracy. Nagafin wins a gunfight. Royalty does as well. And now the battle for Garage is on. Still oh. a 40-point advantage, however, for Orbit. So much burns right there. He got three of the four players. Faceno has time to get back into position after that team kill, as you mentioned. I'm liking the rotations early on from Orbit. The host might be coming into play, but interesting decisioning. Decision making. Taking game one, taking game four to host the two out of the five. And you're seeing Facento lighting things up currently. Just a two streak, but his shot is on. Yeah, and I like, I mean, I know some people will say, you know, don't talk about host too much, doesn't matter as much, or it matters too much. I think it's a big part of it, especially now that you can veto a host. There's a strategy to it. There really is. Uh, that goes into it, picking what maps, what game types, who you don't want to host, who can. I think there's a lot to it, and it's uh, going to become more and more significant part of it uh, throughout this Season 3. But right now, we do see Burns up top. He's at 14-9. and nine. They're just dominating right now. It's 103-28. to 28 despite the fact that Remy and Nagafin filling up the kill feed currently. Yeah, let's go over to Remy. Five streak from him, 12 and nine, starting to turn his game around. He was negative before that spree, and now you're gonna see Burns just pushing in on the back. I feel like Epsilon, they keep getting these breaks, but they never know how to hold a hard point so far on Detroit. They haven't really been able to hold it at all. And we have, what, 20? seconds or so left here. You see there's six or so people in around the hard point. There's going to be an absolute slugfest here right now. Nagafen gets a couple. Royalty and Swanee are going to clean stuff up as well. So they'll get the final time. That was better. You know, they've only gotten that kind of 8 to 15 second scrap time. They were able to get 20 plus there at the end and lock it down. But now it's going to come down to the rota rotation and the battle up top here at Skull. Remy is going to be in. He's nice. going to be the first one to pick up one. He is going to oh, get two. Really? Actually, there's a third front steps and Remy's finally going to fall. He had a five streak. That was his six streak from Remy. Swanee trying to jump in. He's cleaned up. So is Nagafen and Royalty. Remy, last man standing by himself in lockers, picking up one, challenging two and three. The man is an animal, fearlessly challenging everything while his teammates get back into position. Well, I was going to watch Burns for a second on the outside, but he got cleaned up. Coming off of spawn was happy. He's going to be coming in the backside, Chris, and he's not going to win his gunfight either. So. Orbit got a bit of a split spawn there. They're going to lose gunfights on either side, and that's going to allow for this final 20 seconds to potentially go. But who was it that broke in? I guess Accuracy and Pacento, the other two up for Orbit, were able to break it. 
accuracy just charged right in. And what was weird was Epsilon started leaving the hard point with 12 seconds left. So some sloppy play early on from Epsilon. They've had some nice breaks. They've had a, a few key sprints there from Remy. But overall, the kills just aren't coming in. You see Royalty really struggling online so far. 13 and 20. Hasn't been able to drop the numbers that we saw from him on land. Naga Ben off to a slow start at 14 and 17. Remy's doing everything in his power, but they simply need more slaying at this point in the game. Uh, yeah, I know there's a lot of time left, Chris, but when you're trailing by almost 100 points right now, it can seem very, very overwhelming. This is when they need, I mean, their only player that can really do it is Swanee. They need someone to step up, get angry, get the guys hyped up, really start to lead the charge back. And that's been the biggest issue with Epsilon, though, is you've got some young players, some inexperienced players, some guys that lack the skills in communication. And that's when it's very difficult, especially. I mean, you can play with that, I think, when you have a lead, Chris. It's a lot easier. But when you're trailing, you really need someone to be vocal. Back over to Orbit now. Accuracy charging into the middle of the map. He's cut down. Burn plus five, seven captures. Leads everyone else in the lobby. On the long flank, isn't going to be able to get it done with the ASM-1. Orbit, uh, they're just playing for back green control, though, right now. And you see Epsilon setting up for the push. It's Vicento in the key position. I'll switch over and take a look at Vicento here. He was going to be pushing back alley. Has a little bit of help in front, too. And he might be able to catch one, clean up these players. Flying in, gets one. Not able to get the second. That was Royalty that came in and got, got the two-piece, I think. Got one on the right side, swung left, and got the other on the left side there. And as you look at the mini-map, it just doesn't matter. The spawns from orbit too close. Epsilon spawning way out over at the statue. They have so much ground to make up and 20 points left on this hard point. We're gonna see already 200 points from the orbit squad with three minutes left on the clock. I talked about hard point being their weakness. Well, apparently when they're hosting, it is not a problem. You got Burns dropping serious numbers. The whole team contributing on focusing around the hard point, though they've totally changed the way they've played this game. And that's what I mean, though, with the host. Uh, you know, you really have to think about how you want to use it. They struggle in hard point. You know what? Let's take our game one host. Let's use the advantage in this hard point, and then we're going to have to come up clutch in some of our stronger game types when we're off host. And right now, the gamble's paying off for them as they look poised to definitely take game number one as they've got 216 points here. Still two and a half minutes to go. And just trying to see if there's anyone really on a streak right now. No one really going off here from either side. I'm going to get eyes on with Burns when he spawns up and see what he's able to do. Burns, best score in the game, 30 and 24. You see accuracy right behind him at plus five. Over on the other side, actually, Swanee has gone into plus eight, but the kills are just coming so late in this game. Not enough early on from this Epsilon lineup in our final two minutes. You look at it, and I mean, they, they could mathematically make the comeback here, but I don't think it's likely at all. Epsilon is bound to be flooded here, and I'm going to see just... What is Swanee doing? How do you finish this game if you're at Listen, Swanee? You know it's already I, over. All I can think about right now, Chris, is the fact that I'm really glad that you denied my change of picks since I had Orbit and they've taken game number one. I wish. I wish. The, the record stood true. Epsilon <laughs> was going to win. But if you're Swanee, honestly, uh, what was your question exactly? Like, what do you do if you're Swanee? You know, what, yeah. do you, what do you talk to the team about? Basically, how do you finish? Oh, God. Right now, I mean, I guess just try to win as many gunfights as you can, bring it as close as you can, expect a bit of a moral victory. But right now, I mean, if, if you're the leader, if you're talking about it, it's game one, you're off host, you got to climb back. You know, you had the opposite result yesterday. What, they went up 2-0 and threw it away? Now it's their opportunity to try and, try and climb back in the series. I was taking a look at the mini-map. Some of the players here from Epsilon stopped moving, but Remy is not giving up. He is giving it his all in this one. Swanee is going to finish around 40 kills as we tick down to the final seconds. Orbit needs just four more. At this point in the game, they don't care about the kills, but Burns at 39 about to drop a 40 bomb of his own. 35 seconds left. They're closing it out here. And if they should be able to hit the 250 mark. Yeah, I'll take away right now. They go. are going to get the big win in game one. And they led, I mean... It's not like it was back and forth. They were up 100 points within a couple of minutes, Chris. I mean, they, I think from what the three minute mark on, they basically carried a 100 point advantage through the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So the one thing I guess you can take from this, you know, when you were talking again about what 
what are they able to do here if you're Epsilon? I, on the bright side, I guess, you know, if you didn't get your ass kicked in the first three minutes, you played it pretty even. You just can't start out slow like that, and maybe that is a test of the fact they didn't warm up a little bit beforehand or not sure what the cause is. They got to get rolling here for game two. They have to take the S&D. Let's take a look at the stats here one more time. I want to focus on the the players that were getting the big kills, but also the defense. You look over and it seems like Epsilon was right there with them. They had eight defense versus, you know, just six coming in from this Orbit team. But I think Orbit was just getting the big kills outside and they had the big rotations. Viseno in the back never really let anything happen to that green hall. Accuracy the first time around, huge kills in that green hall. I think that was the game changer better positioning by orbit in the first hard point epsilon if they're thinking about the next game that's what they got to be thinking about when they go back to hard point if they can force game four for now though all minds are on solar search and destroy is coming up next we'll find out can epsilon tie things up